California has more than a million outdoor pools, more than any other state. They've become iconic, the California dream of glitz, glamour, and fun in the sun. But pools can also have an ugly side, ugly and dangerous. So there's some mosquitoes right now, so I'll treat it. And then, are you guys gonna drain it? It seems we're getting more and more with just the people can't afford to take care of their pool anymore. The recession has not been kind to California pools. Many homeowners who are facing foreclosure or cutting expenses have stopped treating their pools or running their filters. It doesn't take long for the stagnant water to attract mosquitoes. In addition to the nuisance that they cause, uh, they can be significant carriers of disease, and West Nile virus is, is an example of that. Each one of those pools can breed hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of mosquitoes during a season if, if it's let go. And if the virus is active, then it's just a numbers game. Since 2003, West Nile has sickened more than 3,000 people in California and killed 110. Back then, the county would find about 40 problem pools a year, mostly through neighbor complaints. Now they treat about a thousand pools a year, thanks to their secret weapon. Meet Bob Franklin, retired engineer, pilot, dirty pool hunter. Franklin developed a high-tech system to identify exactly where those nasty pools are. Technically, this is baggage. <laughs> Here's how it works. The computer is hooked up to a camera, three GPS systems, and the autopilot. GPS tells the computer exactly where the plane is at all times. The computer sets the exposure on the camera and triggers the shutter every time the GPS hits a new geomarker. The computer also guides the pilot, helping him stay on a tight course at a precise altitude. Uh, the pilot that's going to be flying with me today, uh, his tolerance right now is down to 20 feet absolute. So if you think about that, there's a little 20 foot little circle that he's going through in the sky and mm -hmm. he, will, he will keep this plane within that 20 foot circle for hours. The result of all this precision is a grid of images clear enough to zoom in as far as half an inch. From the air, uh, from looking at, at pools, we can actually see the drain at the bottom of the pool. We can see uh, how clear the water is and we can also see the, um, the pool sweeps mm -hmm. and whether there's strings of, uh, of um, uh, algae. So. Oh, and in case you missed it, this one-of-a-kind system is mounted over a hole in the floor of the plane. In April, Franklin and his pilot photographed a portion of Santa Clara County. So we're coming in at the north end close to Milpitas, and then it's simply just driving the, uh, the plane back and forth. Franklin flies about 60 of these missions a year. He has contracts with 43 vector control districts in California, Oregon, and Nevada. A week later, Franklin handed over a pile of high-resolution images with letters marking what could be dirty pools. He labels them either green, half-empty, empty, empty um, questionable, or murky. Like sometimes they're trampolines. And then sometimes people have filled in their pool and then they grow grass in it and then the grass kind of gets a similar green tint. Sometimes we can't really zoom in and get the uh, clarity that we need to really check if it is. So we'll take that address and we'll go onto Google Maps and then we'll click that address and you can zoom in nice and low on that one. But this picture could have been taken six months to a year ago. So by going out and doing the aerial photo, we, um, we're getting accurate you know, data that's a week old. Having fresh data is important because many of the pools have been treated by vector control before. Uh, I was here a couple of years ago about your pool and I just noticed as I was going over the overpass that it looks dry. Is it all the way dry in the deep end too? It's not all the way dry because it's rain. Yeah, yeah. Can I check for mosquitoes? Okay. The homeowner drained all the water out, but winter rains filled it up again. He sprays to kill the larva, but if the water doesn't dry up or get drained soon, the mosquitoes may come back. On his way out, Kaufman looks around to find other possible mosquito havens. He finds one right away. So there is water in here. 
and then there's larva. That one's not good. So see, no matter what you do with the tire, it always goes back in. So all I do is I come back with a fish, I'll ask her to get rid of it. One of the easiest ways to keep mosquitoes away is to dump some mosquito fish in the water. These guppy cousins eat the larva and thrive in swampy water. They just swim in when the mosquito lays her eggs on the water and then the larvae hatch out. That little bit of movement gets the mosquito fish excited and then they'll go eat the larva. So we use them in horse troughs and we use them in swimming pools and people that have like ornamental ponds in their yard. This pool is definitely stagnant and filled with algae. But the fish installed last winter are doing their job and Kaufman doesn't find any larva. They're doing good. Nice and big and healthy. And you can put like a trap in there and we'll catch a few of them. Oh, okay. We'll leave you plenty. But then, especially with a little bit of the algae there and stuff like that, they'll reproduce in there for you. Kaufman finds a paradox in many of the pools he visits. The owners keep their homes impeccably clean and their yards maintained, but for various reasons, they can't keep up with the pool. Sometimes you go to houses and you talk to them and they say, well, yeah, I am just keep throwing chlorine in there, but I can't afford to run the pump. Or, you know, the filter broke and they can't afford to fix it. All those expenses can add up fast. Probably an average of 30 to $40 a month on chemicals, $50 a year for the tools, $5 a day to run the pump. And if they hire a company to take care of it, it's between one twenty-five to one fifty a month. On top of that, homeowners can be fined up to a thousand dollars a day if they ignore vector control's notices and refuse to take care of their pools. We've never had to find anybody because usually they see a thousand dollar per day fine. They go, oh, "I'm not gonna, can't afford that." But I mean, it's, we're not trying to get out and say you've got to do this or you've got to do that. We're just trying to take care of so there's not a mosquito problem. I'm Jessica Parks, reporting for the Peninsula Press, a project of the Stanford Graduate Program in Journalism.